is a great opinion piece uh, written by Dieter Walzenegger. How Uber, Lyft and other gig companies won an election but still could lose the vote. Big shareholders are pushing investment in gig workers, well-being to boost corporate profits and stock gains. One of the biggest questions for investors and the business community is how corporations step up to address the simultaneously devastating public health and economic impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic and the national reckoning over systemic racism. These are issues that go far beyond one election, and in the case of gig economy companies, including Uber Technologies and Lyft, DoorDash and others, they are certainly not settled by the result of California's Proposition 22, which brought gig companies a victory earlier this month. For institutional investors and shareholders, including CTW Investments Group, which works in collaboration with union pension funds that care about long-term and sustainable revenue, the outcome of Proposition 22, which was in favor of the position taken by corporations, does not solve the long-standing workforce failures of many gig companies. Indeed, the gig sector had to fund the most expensive California ballot measure ever in order to win. The companies have promised tangible improvements in pay and health services. They now face the challenge to make good on them and not risk the disengagement of its frontline workers. Proposition 22 exempts gig economy companies from a California labor law that requires drivers to be classified as employees and not contractors. Yet regardless of the legal characterization of the millions who make a living by working in the gig economy as contractor or employees, what's clear is that gig companies can only prosper if the drivers it depends on are able to prosper with it. Thank you. Amen. This means addressing issues from diversity to sexual harassment and workers' protections from the pandemic. The burden is now on the company's boards of directors rather than California voters to address these serious risks by strengthening the oversight and stepping up to the plate. Uber is one such company that has invested far more in hiding from its risks than confronting them head on a strategy that will only cost the company in the long run. For example, in 2017, Uber suffered a major sexual harassment scandal that led to the resignation of the company's founder and CEO, as well as a federal investigation. Uber still discloses little to no information about the racial, ethnic, and gender composition of its driver's workforce, though independent research on the New York Seattle and London market finds that Uber's drivers are predominantly lower income people of color. Moreover, while Uber has acknowledged the importance of some human capital metrics, such as driver retention, diversity and inclusion, in its ESG report, the company has not charged a board committee with responsibility for overseeing human capital management, nor has it modified board committee charters to reflect responsibility either for these metrics or for workforce issues overall. CTW Investment Group, where I am the executive director, has called on Uber's board to consider a new model to strengthen its oversight by including human capital management as a core responsibility. Our proposal follows the suggestions of Leo Strine Jr., a former Chief Justice of the Delaware Supreme Court, who called on boards to give compensation committees responsibilities in their Charter for Human Capital Management. This responsibility includes overseeing gain sharing among workers, top management and shareholders, so that workers are rewarded for productivity increases and to ensure that incentives are in place to encourage success across the organization. Moreover, the pandemic made clear that affordable health care and paid sick leave are critical for long-term success. In our view, these changes would help reduce pressures for more intrusive government regulation and recognize the contribution of workers, regardless of their employment status, to sustainable value creation at Uber and other gig economy companies. Research demonstrates 
a strong connection between investment in the workforce and higher total shareholder return, return on assets, return on capital, profitability, and overall firm performance against benchmarks. Controversially, poor and disjointed workforce policies can lead to material risks to the firm and shareholder value. The road ahead for Uber, Lyft, and other gig economy companies, including Postmates, Instacart, and DoorDash, still runs through the ability to tackle those long-term workplace tensions that are inherent in their business models. And I want to add to this also the tension that drivers have towards the company for the ill treatment. Don't ignore drivers here. And they won't cruise to long-term success by spending hundreds of millions of dollars every time their business models are challenged. The scrutiny will not subside, and these companies would be wise to show their commitments to long-term solutions. Very true. Very, very well written. Um, our, the article by Market Watch, written by Dieter Walzenegger, how Uber, Lyft, and other gig companies won an election but still could lose the vote. Your input, please. And a huge shout out to my sponsor, Kova. Starts at seven bucks a month. You get one month free by, with the link beneath the video with my Rideshare Professor link. These are the companies that it protects against gig protection plan, as I said, 24-7 health service, sick leave, automatic mileage tracking, paid time off, legal protection. What do they mean by legal protection? Well, if you get wrongfully terminated or deactivated over a false report, their legal arm, which is Legal Rideshare, sends out letters, legalrideshare.com, and gets you reinstated. They basically represent you during the wrongful termination. Now, what makes Legal Rideshare so special? Well, they firstly, they cover all drivers and delivery people nationwide, not just Chicago. If you have been in a major accident, if you've had any injury, if your riders were injured in that accident, if you've had any property damage to your car, if you, let's say, out of commission for a few months and you've lost some major wages, they will handle the entire insurance claim for you, right? They get paid when you get paid, and they are the best of the best in the industry. LegalRideShare.com. Thank you. Have a great day.